from the vlog can. Now she doesn't care about it anymore. Nope, doesn't care. Blah, 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 blah. She was being very cute. Oh, now she's nope. just not sure. What is it? I also am intimidated by Super Mario World, so... On it. <laughs> you take this home. She is I want to place a tell of you. She's giving this back to you, I oh, think. Oh, no. Oh, sweetheart. Don't you want to play Mario World? No, she wants to play Chrono Trigger. <laughs> My dog has taste. Hey, don't speak ill of Super Mario World. It's one of the greatest launch titles ever released. I was about to say it's the greatest launch title. It's up there. What's your, I mean, okay, uh, what, what? Mario 64. Mario 64. Wasn't Twilight Princess also a launch title? Twilight Princess was, mm. No, was it wasn't not, oh no, no, Twilight no. Twilight Princess no. was on GameCube. No, it was no. a launch title. It, it was, was a launch yeah, title for Wii. Because they released it on GameCube and Wii. I don't know if it was a launch, was Breath, it a launch title? Breath of the it might have been like a month title. later, but I'm going to count it as a launch title. I, Breath, of I, Breath of the Wild is a launch title? Oh, Christ. I think Super Mario World is better than Super Mario 64. What about Wii Sports? They're both great. Super Mario 64 redefined an entire genre and brought all of, uh, brought platform gaming into 3D in a better executed way than anything else had ever done. And that's cool. So I guess it's more historically significant. To but if honest. I was just going to like sit down and play a game, I would rather play Super Mario. Oh, I'd rather play Same. Mario 64 play Mario Super Mario World. personally, but it's fine. They're both good. Actually, thinking about it, all the Nintendo consoles have pretty strong launch titles. It's almost like <laughs> it's almost like they're a business. I mean, and they tried really hard to make sure that the launch titles were. As strong as possible. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, it's not always... Pro I mean, like... What did GameCube have? Luigi's Mansion? I mean, Luigi's Mansion is... It's technically a month later. Well, it came out in time for Christmas. It did. It did. I mean, yeah, if you're I mean, counting... My experience was getting a GameCube for Christmas with Melee. Yeah. Well, think, same, actually. It's a launch title in my heart. Yeah, I mean, if you count Melee, Luigi's then... Mansion was not... Luigi's Mansion is very good, but speak ill of games that your fans love. Well, and I love Luigi's Mansion's great. It's not Luigi's Mansion is good. It is not Mario sixty four. It's not. It is not. It's it's not, it's not the same caliber, <sighs> but it is very good. And if you're it counting was, it melee, was it was disappointing when they when they trotted it out like, "Here, a new Mario game for our new console," and it's like it's not that. Yeah, well, that was the, that was just the GameCube experience because then they did the same thing with Zelda, and they were like, "You wanted this the, the Zelda tech demo? It's cel shaded." Sorry. Well, Wind Waker was good at least. So was Luigi's Mansion. Uh, anyway, hi, uh, welcome to uh, what Thursday. the Thursday? Yeah, did you just roll your eyes? Of course I did. Don't roll your eyes. It's Thursday. It is Thursday. We had. Uh, we had like a little uh, date night, which is fun. We watched White Christmas, which is a movie I have never seen before. We were trying to thaw oh, Stephen's Christ, heart, Stephen the Christmas hater. But after watching White Christmas, you sort of turned over a new leaf, right? Tell us how much you love Christmas now. I love Christmas because before I saw this film, I so clearly disliked. I remember in college, I tried to buy you. Uh, Christmas present one time, and you just hit me. <laughs> we had a big cane, it was a big like oak cane, like lacquered, very heavy. Jesus Christ! And, and you would just beat me over the head with it until I fell to the ground bleeding. Why you did said, you do not buy me a gift? I hate Christmas. <laughs> So it's really amazing to see you, uh, you yeah, know, singing really, all the songs from White Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, which which song was your favorite? Snow. Snow. I actually so so that was the interesting part is that I don't know why, um, but I know the snow song. 
Like it's on my my song playlist. It's objectively the worst. It's song probably the worst movie. song, but it's I don't know. I know it for some reason, and I had never seen the film and choreography. Though. And getting it, getting a chance to actually see where that takes place in the film was really interesting, and uh, with a kind napkin. kind of disappointing actually. It's with a napkin. <laughs> yeah, it's, mm. uh, but the movie the movie was good. It was good to watch a movie again because I haven't actually seen a movie in a long time. Watch a movie next week. Yeah, I subject you to more of my favorite Christmas movies. Well, it's like the top two, right? Yeah, these are the only two Christmas movies I like. I don't care about any other ones. There's probably rare exports. You've talked about. Mm, Sorry, rare exports. Third great, third other greatest Christmas movie. The only Christmas movies that matter. There are only three. There's uh, White Christmas, there's Muppet Christmas Carol, and then there's Rare Exports. Go to hell, Jimmy Stewart. You're and each of them, movie house. <laughs> each of them really fill a very different niche. So um, Rare Exports is thematically quite different. Um, but, you know, if you'd like to have the Haley's favorite Christmas movie drive-in experience, those are the three movies you should watch. Maybe Rare I mean, Exports last. Yeah, I've never heard of Rare Exports, Steve. other than you talking about it a little Are bit. Are we watching um, The Princess Switch 2 this Christmas? Can we watch Rare Exports? You will like, Rare Exports is a spooky movie. Oh, is it? Rare Exports. Yeah, I mean, it's good. You would like it. You like it. Okay. It's a Scandinavian, it's campy It's not English. Horror oh, yeah. Okay, that sounds Look, interesting. My people right now who know... They know. I mean, also, like, I enjoyed White Christmas, so... You would enjoy Rare, rare Exports. Basically the same thing. Okay. I like movies. I like watching movies. It's interesting, especially watching something as old as White Christmas, to see how filmmaking techniques have changed. And then also to see what was acceptable. Like, one of the things that is extremely jarring to me watching White Christmas is that, like, modern film rules did not really... I don't know, exist or apply, or maybe they just didn't apply to the same degree in musicals. Uh, so there's a rule where you have to jump a certain degree, like, otherwise it, it's too jarring. And, like, that just happened all the time throughout White Christmas. Like, it just okay. never stopped. I didn't notice. Yeah, I didn't notice any such. Yeah, clearly the rule didn't matter all that much. Well, to me, it's very jarring, and it's fine. Did you notice it before someone taught you that rule? what's college for if not learning like what's the what's the point like there's a lot of continuity issues in white christmas and a lot of it has to do with the fact that there's not anything like change like there's no drastic change in what's being filmed like there is a change but it's not drastic so and that's because it's for the most part shot from one side because it's a musical yeah yeah I'm not taking a crap on White Christmas. I'm oh, saying that filmmaking has yeah, changed whatever. since 1954. Know. We know that you hate Christmas. Oh my <laughs> god. Okay. Anyway, this. Did you know, speaking of movies, that uh, you, you're, one of your favorite movies it was, I, you watched in college was Tooth Fairy, right? Oh my god. Did you know that there was a Tooth Fairy two? No. It was a direct-to-video sequel starring Larry the Cable Guy. As oh my god. Fairy. Yeah. Oh, that's a problem for me. From 2012, so maybe that should be our next Christmas movie. No, we're watching Rare Exports. I'd rather watch Rare Exports. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna end it here. Actually, I I'll have to update Leatherboxd, and I haven't watched a movie I think since I watched Lord of the Rings yeah. in February. Wow. I got there. It took me a while, but we we got there. We got there. We got there. Thanks for watching. Let me know your favorite Christmas movie and then tell me why I should watch it. And I might watch some other Christmas movies make in sure you December focus, and January. Make sure you focus on the technical aspects of the cinematography if you want Stephen to, to take your recommendation and watch it. I mean, it does help. It really does. Like, if there's interesting, they, they're, like... They're, mm, just straight rule of thirds the whole time. That's not... You it's know, fine. Maybe in St. Louis number one on Rotten Tomatoes for that. For what? Um, a hundred best Christmas movies of all time on Rotten Tomatoes. Number one, Meet Me in St. Louis. No. I disagree. I've never seen it. 
but it's got great music. It does.